Hi, Amber. Thank you so much for coming on the Power of Women Wellness podcast. We are so excited to have you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited to learn more about you and your history and what brought you to where you're at now. So fill us in on just your, I guess, career journey. Yeah, of course. So I have a background in personal training. My degree was kinesiology and I wanted to be a, um, I really ultimately wanted to be a physical therapist. And then I graduated into the Great Recession, which meant not going to grad school and just grabbing a job. I was a personal trainer out of college and that just, people were cutting that out of their, you know, excess funds while they were losing their jobs. So I got, I got the nearest desk job and did what I could to work my way into the event side of that corporation just because I wanted to move my body and sitting all day just wasn't for me. And eventually that led to opening up my own company for, um, as a wedding planner, I moved from corporate to social events after I got married and I loved it. I did that for a decade, a little over a decade. And I recently, I sold that a couple of years ago. One of my own children and that schedule just was too hard for our family. And it's now a business consultant in the wedding industry. And it's really fun and exciting for my life and all the things, but um, it has a lot of flexibility in our lives. And, um, but I do have to be really intentional about, you know, I hope they move my body because I'm behind the computer again. So, yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm with you. So that's really cool <laughs> to hear your journey, I guess, through the recession and stuff. That's so interesting that that was a huge pivoting mm -hmm. moment for you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm glad I'm guessing you're glad that everything worked out, but I know that there's probably still some In a love. weird way. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, health. One, of the, one of the things that I wanted to do actually was ironically, the, the one, the thing that I really wanted to do was become a first responder in some capacity and I'm just I'm really prone to um I, I stay really calm in those situations and I just love blood guts and the body and anatomy and all of that and like I feel like that's kind of a rare breed to take advantage of people that don't mind that stuff and yeah. but the schedule for that found it so daunting and then sure enough I became a wedding planner and had the same banana life so uh, I should have just done it in the first place but um no, I feel like my my next career, if I ever get to it, will be I want to be a, a an ER nurse in a really um, like big city, like high risk area. I just oh. I, I, I thrive in this. I don't know. So that's awesome. Okay. I mean, hey, that's not everyone has that personality. Not, I know, trait. I know. And I so. talk to I have a lot of nurse friends. They're like, no, you don't. And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay, so call you if there's a hectic, crazy situation. People are like, "Do you are you a cell? Like, how are you?" Yeah, they've seen me. Some of my friends have seen me handle situations. You know, something will happen in public, and you know, you have to help. You know, citizens yeah. help each other, and they're like, "How did you do that?" I'm like, "I don't know. Thanks for this. I promise. It's so weird, but <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome." Yeah. And have you yourself struggled with anything um, health wise? Not even like a disease mm -hmm. per se, but just like symptoms, like chronic fatigue or period problems. I know people love yeah. to hear, you know, where you've been. Yeah. Okay. So I got Lyme's disease in my twenties, and I was living in Dallas, Texas, and I wasn't taken very seriously because. Oh my God. It does, there's not, we don't really have lines here. It's a tick problem and whatnot. And the story for that is wild, but I, I got Lyme disease and it was misdiagnosed for a while, which meant I got really bad. And um, you may be aware that Lyme disease can even be misdiagnosed as bipolar. And we have bipolar in our family and I've always been monitored for that. So it was just, I mean, we just went every which direction trying to figure that out. And it, and then um, the, the trauma that I created on my body activated a dormant gluten intolerant gene that is also lots of people in my family struggle with. And I never had. And so that kind of woke up and now I can't eat gluten. And so um, yeah, wow. that, that was a big journey. And then the other big journey I've, I've gone through is uh, postpartum, like severe postpartum depression. My my second baby destroyed me. And I mean, they say, it's a year to make baby, takes a year to feel normal again. And let me tell you, she is six years old and I started feeling normal last year. Like, wow. Lots of, yeah, lots of advocating for myself with doctors and um, just hormone conversations and just 
mental health than all of that. It's been a, it's been an adventure. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, yeah. That's, that's, I'm really proud of you for advocating for yourself because so many women tend to just like let things slide by. And then sometimes they'll yeah. feel even more guilty of like, why do I feel this way? You know, mm -hmm. I should be, it's just everyone's journey is so different, but yeah. that's pretty crazy about life. So you have also no idea where you got it. Oh, I do. Okay. <laughs> Girl, we, okay. I'll try to keep this really short. Basically I was living in Dallas and I was waking up. I remember waking up one night and be like, oh, there's a bug crawling on me. And you know, you, you swipe it off and you move on or whatever. And then I don't know, a few nights later, a week or two later, it happened again. And I was like, oh, whatever. And, you know, I have a, I'm out of it. So I swipe it off. And then it happened a third time. And I was like, wait a second. And it like clicked. And I woke up. And then I went and I flipped on the lights and I flipped my bed back. And my bed was covered in ticks. Like, stop it. Yes. <laughs> and I was, I was like, yeah, my, goosebumps. Yes. No, I started actually somewhere in this, in the middle of this, I left this out. I was waking up, I was having hives and I was going to an allergist and I was like, I mean, one day my eye was full of stuff. I was like, I'm itchy. Like we did the whole, like, what are you allergic to? Like all the, the prick tests and everything. And like, came up with nothing. And sure enough, I saw the ticks that day and I didn't know this. This is just, I don't know, ignorance, I guess. There are soft shell ticks and there are hard shell ticks. And soft shell ticks, they feed, they feed on you or they feed on their, um, whatever it's called, um, their hosts. And then they run off. Like, I, I, always, I always thought ticks, okay, I always thought ticks, like, just latched in and it was like, you had to, this whole, because I, I grew up in South Carolina and when we had a tick, you had to, like, do the whole thing with the needle and the, all the stuff. So, um, I don't know where they were coming going from. We suspect maybe that my dog, I, I had a little dog set and I was, she slept with me and we suspect that maybe she brought them in and they were like breeding and taking them to my room at that point and like along the floorboards or something. We, uh, we don't know. Oh so, um, so I went back to the allergist and was like, I need you to test me. At this point, I'm sick too. I'm like, I need you to test me for Lyme disease. I think I have Lyme disease. I've been a host for all these ticks. And she's like, no, 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 you never had the ring. It, it's got to be something else. And she like wouldn't test me. And that was one of the first times that I had to be like, no, you will test me. And so she did. And sure enough, it was positive. And she was like, what? We don't, one of the reasons you don't want to test me is because we don't, don't really have that in Dallas. Oh and so I was in there. And, 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 and she wanted to, and she did, I took the antibiotic for it. That's typically what you do. There's, you get Lyme disease, you take an antibiotic and that's that. Well, at this point, it progressed so much that that wasn't going to do it. So I worked with um, someone here in Austin, actually, that um, for a year, I was on all kinds of supplements and, and oh my changed gosh. my diet and everything. I mean, it took a long time. And so, um, yeah, and fortunately, but unfortunately, my mom has experienced, you know, a, a lot of this you know, um, reproductive health and mental health and whatnot is genetic. And so I've watched my mom have to advocate for herself in a lot of ways over the years. And so I've learned that from her and I'm sad that that was her experience, but I've just, I've had that modeled for me. So I knew to do it. And anyone with me, if you've not had that model for you, if a doctor, if you if follow your gut and if a doctor, or your intuition, if a doctor is you know, let's like, respect their expertise for sure, but like ask questions, get a second opinion, take someone with you because once I brought someone else in the room, I was taken more seriously. Half wow. The time. Wow. I mean, yeah, Lyme's definitely so dismissed because of like, mm -hmm. oh, you don't have your typical red ring and it's just not always as prominent, but that literally gave me like, oh, like goosebumps even just thinking at, at first when you're like the first time it happened and you just kind of swiped it away. I'm like, I could never, I would have to like yeah. wake up and be like, what was that? Like, I am so, oh, bugs are just not my friend. Well, yeah, no, me too. But like, I just think I was so tired. I was just, yeah, I was like, in a dream. I was in a lucid state, and it just didn't. It didn't <laughs> click, and then finally it did, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, oh, yeah, it was so bad." <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so yeah. PTSD. So I'm, I'm so those are those are bug bites. <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh my gosh, but okay, so we're. I'm just excited to dive deep because you had like such a huge like health experience with many things so tell us what your morning routine looks like like everything from like what you eat drink things you do for mental health like what does mm -hmm. your morning look like 
Yeah, so I think as I've gotten older and wiser, <laughs> I'm trying to develop an actual routine of sorts because I've, I'm I'm finally willing to accept that does make a difference. And, you know, as I have, I have a six and an eight year old, so what is routine, right? Like your mom, you get it. Like <laughs> we could have all these grand plans for routines and, 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 and maybe we stick to them, but they just get derailed um, at some ages. And so I try to, uh, my, my husband is an early bird and I'm a night owl. And so we have a general cadence of he does uh, kind of the first waking shift in our house and I take care of some things more at night. So that helps a little bit. So I try to, I try to, I try to get a little bit extra sleep in the morning. I know, I know if I don't, I just, my body can't, I have to pay attention to my body's needs. And that's not always possible because the world demands, you know, this box of everything is done in these hours. And so I have to just figure it out. But I start with taking um, um, supplements and some things for my thyroid. My One of the things that happened when my daughter, um, when I had my daughter, my thyroid, I went into hypothyroidism. So I take, um, I take all of that. I also have ADHD. So I, um, I just, I, I, I take five minutes personally for that and um, have I, I went a long time without it, and I will probably do that again in the future. But in this particular study, so it's 13 is always changing. I, I can't. I can't not take yeah. it. I just, I, I've, I've done all the food supplements. I've done everything, and I just, I need that result. And so my plan yeah. is to, as we know, that I start that day with those things. I start with visible glass of water, and I usually eat something a little bit lighter in the morning, a smoothie or like a veggie blueberry muffin or um, a salt bowl of cereal. But more protein shake and then I usually go to the gym first and I either go to the gym first thing in the morning or I go at lunch so um I try to do that three or four times a week so that's kind of my um I try to just like wake up slow a little bit and I've gotten really good about not getting on social media right away I've removed that from my phone um and so that's been helpful but oh it's not perfect so yeah. I do I, I will I'll check my emails and all that stuff but um, I try to pause and do some, have some spiritual moments too and, and whatnot. So just yeah. kind of ease into it. But yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I'm not perfect at it, but it definitely is on top of mind to try to avoid social media and emails. But I also say it feels really good to just like check those things off and then like get like, yeah. I don't know, have it aside. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes opening up your email at like 9am after everything's said and done and you're like, 50 and then there's yeah. all these messages mm -hmm. I don't know I yeah. go back and forth I, guess I, I check my calendar first too because I check mm. that before bed and I check it in the morning because I'm not going to try to pretend that I remember everything while I slept so I check that again like make sure I don't you know um mess myself up if I stay in bed an extra 10 minutes or something but another thing so and and you can resonate to this because you're so good on social media and things like that Part of my, like my workflow for my job as a creative in, in a creative industry is like I, I have Facebook open on my computer all the time. That is part of my workflow. And um, I have a large group that I manage and that's uh, where I get a lot of my income and whatnot. And so it's hard for me to not have that on my phone. And I've tried so many times to remove that. Um, and realistically, it's easier to do my job with that on my phone. And so something I tried earlier this year was I ended up getting an iPad. Because it's just like the way that those apps and stuff work on phone are just so much easier than my yeah. computer. And so I got the iPad so that I could I could do those things with ease. I take that stuff off my phone so that I could have my camera and all those things when I'm out and about with my kids. That was like the distraction of because I have the notifications yeah. off and everything. And I just could not. And you develop those literal addictions. And I was like, the only way I know how to do this is like, completely and then find another way to access it and so yeah. that's been helpful uh, and I I remember the first like week or so it'd be like nine ten o'clock I'm like oh my gosh I haven't I haven't checked Instagram yet <laughs> and the world hasn't imploded <laughs> I know it's so true um I always thought people who had even two phones or like work phone and not work phone and I was like oh, that is so unneeded and now I fully respect and understand why people have a work phone and then a personal yeah. phone and yeah. I'm like kind of want to adapt, adapt yeah. to that yeah. because of that yeah. reason of just 
wanting to leave all the apps and things for work set aside and then just yeah. having that like phone for, you know, yeah, taking the pictures mm -hmm. and videos of your kids and texting and all that stuff, but not being right. distracted by the work things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel that. And I like, I like social media for my own personal life too. And yeah. so, you know, I want access to those things, but because I live on it for work, it ends up being invasive. Yeah. So. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I know. I, I'm an, I love Instagram. I, I don't really love Facebook. Like Instagram, oh, it's just my favorite. I know. If, if, if my, if I didn't get, if my business wasn't, but, you know, the diversification is so huge. But as uh, currently with that group that I have, if I didn't have that group, I would have gotten off Facebook already. Yeah. But yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Uh, yes, 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 100%. I don't need all the dialogue, just show me videos and pictures and <laughs> all that. Exactly. Um, so what does, so your morning seems pretty simple, straight to the point. Um, yeah. So what does your nighttime routine look like? Also pretty simple and to the point. I feel like I, you know, we get, we get the kids down about eight o'clock or so and give or take and we try to, my husband and I try to touch base and just kind of reflect on, you know, usually we're able to do that before the kids go down and we try to have family dinner. Um, okay. I've done, and you and I have talked about this offline, but just for those listening, um, we have a home manager that helps us with a lot of things in our home. <laughs> and for this meal prepping and helping us get dinner on the table. So she's here in the mornings a couple of times a week, but it's all that prep. So in the evening, all I have to do is pop in the oven or air fryer or whatever. And we have to dinner as much as we can. And that's not perfect. It's not every night. We, we're we good if we're doing it three nights a week between sports and everything. But we kind of have very touch points. And I think that that has created a lot of harmony in our home because we know what's going on. We're, we have proximity with our kids and with each other and our marriage. And from there, once the kids get a bed, if we've had that already, then we can both just kind of like decompress and unwind from our already long days. We're both introverts and we need that solo time to recharge. And then John, like I said, I'm the night owl. John will go to sleep and then I'm like, my brain comes on and I'm like, all right, what can I get done? And even sometimes if that means I'm just laying there and reading a book or that's when I start scrolling through social media and catching up on, you know, my social things, it's just nice to just be quiet house. But I, you know, I don't do that laying in bed. But I try to, um, you know, I I've recently, this is terrible to be almost 39 and just now getting into skincare. <laughs> you do this whole skincare thing. And John's like, your showers have gone from like five minutes to 45. Like, what is happening? <laughs> or like, like <laughs> so he's like totally passed out at the end of all that. And I, I try to read a little bit. And then again, um, I try not to, all sleep rolling sleep when I do that. So I try to end by you know reading something intentionally and that yeah. helps kind of my brain unwind a little bit. So I'm, yeah. I, yeah I'm I'm the, I mean I I'm younger so I guess but I feel like I jumped off the, even or jumped on the skincare game later even than my peers. Uh -huh. Um yeah. but I'm 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 with you. I think my shower also has evolved to like so much longer of like shaving and then facing uh -huh. like doing facial stuff and then doing like yeah. masks in my hair and then doing the regular uh -huh. I, it's just a hot mess. Yeah um, well and I tell him I tell him like this is the only time that no one's trying to touch me. There's not a dog in between my legs staring at my face when I'm in the back like peeing. It's like just yeah. constant stimulation. And it's just like yeah my showers is longer I'm sorry but they have <laughs> it's my only time alone <laughs> and I love that um you and your husband are both introverts I feel like I always see the opposite so I'm more introverted and then Doug you know is very extroverted and he gets thrives off people and mm -hmm. I am just like people drain me so I just can't do much yeah. um and I'm totally the type of personality that will be like no I'm just I have no problem saying no to things um yeah. so do you feel like that works in your favor that you guys are both introverted? Like, cause you're it able does. to understand each other. It does. The, I am more extroverted than he is. I call myself an introvert with extrovert qualities. Like I, I have what I call my game face and I, I can put it on and I can get on a stage and I can speak and I can go network and do all these things. Um, I've, de I've developed and worked hard on, I've worked hard on developing confidence in those arenas but it is very draining it's very yeah. draining like I love I love it while I'm in it but then I leave and I'm like whoa I thought I just got here by a friend 
Yeah. And so I've, I've really had to learn upper balance. And yeah, this is so cool. My six-year-old, or I'm sorry, my eight-year-old, it's like he already gets it. This weekend, I, I said, hey, we can do this, this, and this. He's like, no, that would be such a good day, mom. He goes, what am I doing? I'm like, I need to build, I, want, I need to rest. And he does that all the time. Like, he gets it. And I'm like, God, I wouldn't have given to understand that at eight years old. You know? Yeah. And to approach adulthood with already knowing how to say no and yeah. having a respect for that balance. And he just, he just gets it. And so we, we try to honor that in him too. And my daughter is a raging extrovert. So wish us luck at some point because he's like constantly like, play with me, come on, let's do something. Like, we all That's, that is but, totally yeah. our youngest too. Maybe I, I swear, I also think it's a first born thing because I feel like everyone I talk to their firstborn is very similar, very responsible, very, mm -hmm. um, mine too. Like he'll just be like, I need time alone. I mean, though he loves hanging out with friends, yeah. but my daughter's also an extrovert. Bernanus, so her and Doug get along great because I'm like, if you want to do something, you take yeah, things you got your and sayonara. <laughs> and I will say, well, that's well, that's 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 I think, I mean, that's, that's kind of what Annie and I do. We, uh, when she's feeling more sick, She's way more social than I am, so it doesn't always work out for her. But typically, you know, I'll be like, okay, let's go, sister. We can do something. But she's always, mom, can I have a play date? Can I, can I go here? Can I go? I'm like, you can't just invite yourself over to be, you know, it's just not how that works anymore. But, um, yeah, I think the biggest conflict we have is the early bird night owl thing. That's really hard on us. So hard. But at the same time, I could also see where that's kind of beneficial though. Like, for example, like if you have a sick kid, like you would naturally be the one staying. Up, maybe yeah. like, I don't know. I feel like there's some perks in there. <laughs> so John would laugh hearing you say that because I'm not sure if he, we've identified what those perks are. <laughs> but no, I think, I think at this point, 13 years in, we 14 years, I don't even know where we are. We have accepted it. And yeah. I think what made that a challenge for so long was that it just felt like when someone's not the way you are, it can feel lazy. It can look lazy. It's like, God, mm. you're still in bed. God, mm. you've already gone to bed. Like, it just, and it's just like, I'm, I'm on an island all alone over here trying to get this stuff done. And it's like, he didn't yeah. understand what I was doing at night. And my friend, you know, and so, True. True. or there would be days where he's like, I am tired. I want to sleep late. And I'm like, great. But now we have to communicate. Like, you have to tell me the night before because you know that. He knows that. He knows he's going to bed exhausted. Like, hey, tell me tomorrow, I need you to take the morning. And I'm totally cool with that. Like, I know I can't always sleep, be the one that sleeps late. That's not fair. He's like, but yeah, it's taken a long, long time to. <laughs> That's so, I, but I that. love that y'all's personality, like, kind of infuse your routines which yeah. is, is, is so cool. Um, cause I'm, I'm with you. I definitely think that there's perks at having someone who is very similar in personality. And then, yeah, there's also the cons for like Doug, definitely for anyone who doesn't, doesn't know this, my husband, he doesn't understand when I need to introvert. Cause he's just like, wants to go, go, go. So he's like, what do you mean? Yeah. You want to chill? Oh my gosh. You want to chill all the time. And I'm like, I talk to people all week though. <laughs> So yeah. I'm like burn out by the end of the week. I just want to like be yeah. in my well, and, yeah. And, and my husband is around people more than I am. I definitely mm -hmm. have I talk like we're doing right now, but I I work from home and I have for 10, 11, 12 years. And so and I love that and enjoy it. Um, but I do now that events have changed, I don't get as much of that social outlet as he does on a day-to-day -day basis. So there are plenty of time and, and I don't a lot of times I don't even have a reason to leave the house unless I just choose to go do that. But then I have to because of ADHD, I have to manage my environment to be productive. Yeah. So I can't just go to a coffee job and like hope to, you know, accomplish everything. And so yeah, yeah there'll be plenty of nights and I'm like, let's go, let's get out of the house. And he's like, I am toast. Like, no. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so, awesome. So yeah. be, being a personal trainer to or having that history, what, tell us some of your favorite exercises. Like what's your go-to? Yeah. So I am, I really love HIIT um, okay. exercises, the high intensity training. And I love, I love how that incorporates cardio and um, resistance and doesn't take an hour and a half. <laughs> and it's just, it's really efficient. And I have found that of all the things that I've done over the years, um, I used to, I, I love running, um, but my body is, doesn't love it as much anymore. My knees and IT band, everything starts to scream at me now. Um, I hit still well-rounded and it covers all those little tiny muscles. And, and this came, mm. so I was 
thrown off a horse a couple years ago and I got hurt pretty badly. But given what happened, I should have been severely hurt. And I really wasn't. And we I attribute it to this kind of hit workout that I do because my body, those little tiny muscles have been worked. And so it I don't know, I just I could handle that impact a little better. Wow. And, um yeah. Because I so John my husband at like the peak of his fitness where he was doing lots and lots of racquetball and weight training and just um exercising a lot. He came into one of my hit classes one day and was like on his deathbed that afternoon. He was like, what just happened? And, you know, when you do exercises that you don't typically do, it is hard, but it really affirmed to me how much that is working in my body. So, yeah. And then just yeah. taking walks. Like, I'll tell you, taking walks, it doesn't feel to me in my head like, oh, I've exercised and I've exercised mm-hmm. these, but the mental health aspect of that, of all of it, how it hit everything, but like, like we'll be in a funk as a family or, in our, you know, just having a bad marriage day, or I just need space or whatever. And like, go on a walk and put together and just talking, like, I don't know, because you don't have to look at each other and you can walk yeah. side by side and like kind of talk things out or just be, just be in the presence of each other on a nice night with the breeze. I don't know. It's uplifting. So yeah. I like that sort of stuff. We like to hike a lot and do outdoor nice. sports. So, nice. yeah, staying in shape is important to me because I'll, I never know when I made it a random invitation to like, let's go jump off this canyon. And I have to always be in shape and ready for it. <laughs> I love that. Um, and you kind of told us a little bit of what you eat in the morning. So tell us like the rest of your day. Like what does the, the rest of your day look like? Yeah. So I used to be the kind that's like I had that mentality of like you gotta eat every two hours to keep this stuff and I think that there's um I think science is developed for evolving on that and not doing that as much and so um I try to eat when I'm hungry and not worry too much about like it's 12 o'clock so um I know that wasn't your question but as far as what I feel in those time frames I you know back to the protein shakes um and uh, I do a lot in the air fryer is new and I'm loving it. I use it all the time because I, now I can find like there's throw a piece of fish in there and it's <laughs> easy and perfect and restaurant quality. And Agreed. it took 10 seconds and now I've got a healthy lunch. And so, um, you know, I, I love a protein and a vegetable and um, I, that's kind of my go to for a meal for dinners. And for lunch, I typically will do like a sandwich and some fruit. Or um, a lot of times I'll just go in and I'll pull out random stuff like hummus and I'll just have like, a little smorgasbord of stuff like that. It is like kind of dip, dip my way through it. But um, I'm going to practice, do my very best. You know, I'm not a perfect eater by any means. And I certainly process food and all that stuff, but I do my best to keep an eye on ingredients. and make better choices you know there's like there's best there's great there's bad and like I try to like fall somewhere in the line of like living my life but still making better choices good choices and if that's the option I'll take it and just keeping junk out of the house and then you know if we want lucky charms we're gonna have lucky charms sometimes but that's not just like always on the shelf yeah yeah we got a bunch of lucky charms this week and because I know I'll eat it yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I know speaking of air fryer, that's definitely one of my favorite things, um, is doing salmon. And I think it's noble made. They have a really good, um, I don't, know, maybe, I don't know what it's called, like a citrus seasoning and it has just different herbs. And I think mm-hmm. like probably like dried lemon zest. And so I'll like sprinkle that on there, squeeze like a fresh lemon and like, yeah, oh my gosh, it's so just comes easy. So good. Well, and it allows us to, so I try not to get too down the rabbit hole of everybody gets their own meal because I think that just creates yeah agree that just it creates entitlement and it creates a lot of uh, it's just too much for someone to have to handle all these meals for me. But you know there are nights where we're all kind of coming and going and do have different schedules and that that makes it really easy for people to just kind of like grab what they want and make a quick meal. Yeah. It doesn't take long. The kids can handle it and or with supervision obviously it's really hot. But like we can. They can get it ready and like, yeah, you know, you can get it and like take it out for them and 
Um, and with Simon, especially, he's in the second percentile. And nutrition is something we really like. I mean, to the he's so he's never hungry and he's so tiny that I mean, if the child walked out of his room at 10 p.m. was like, I want a box of donuts, I'd be like, here, you know, take them, just need something. <laughs> but um I think his blood is there and it's opened up a lot for him. He's not picky on what he'll eat. It's just if he's hungry, you know? Yeah. And I think he likes, and it might just be that it's fun and different, but it just, it makes, when his moods vary on what he wants, it makes, it opens up options. So. Yeah. I love that. Um, no, when's my kids, I don't know. I don't know what happened with the second child. I think you just, it's whatever. Like just, I don't know, they're your baby. So I tend to still do things. But with Isaiah, I remember I was just so on point of like, I mean, he was packing his lunches when he was in like first grade. Um, he was like yeah. so good. And yeah. then I don't know, my daughter, she's just a little spoiled little thing. And I don't know, again, maybe it's because she's my little baby. And I'm yeah, like, oh, well, like different. We, we totally treat our our second differently. But I, I think for us, it's because she's the girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not, because, not because I want to be, Tough on my boy and talk to my girl, but just like there's just something like so darling about her to me. And like, yeah, agree. You know? I know <laughs> and it's same thing. Like, I my son's actually very sensitive and I love nurturing that yeah, and, yeah, and, and what that is. But um, I'm just like, <laughs> oh my, you know, my son you is sensitive so and fire. my daughter, yeah, my daughter is the toughest. Yeah, you know, she is way tougher than any of us. And mm-hmm. my son is is the sensitive one, but we still, we still, he's got us wrapped around her finger. Mm-hmm. So agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so what do you do you have any favorite resources for like mental health, mindset, podcasts, books you love? Um, anything that stands out to you of like, okay, I would have to reread this or re-listen to it. It was so good. Yeah, you know, I wish I I wish I did. I don't. I think that that all comes from personal uh just family experience and conversation. And by the time you live it and live it and live it for decades in your home and then like inside your own brain, like, I just don't want to, I just end up not bringing more into it, if that makes sense. And so I have, part of my self-care is to kind of just limit a lot of those voices. So there's definitely Mm. things that I will, there are some accounts on Instagram that I enjoy (laughs) that are more like humor based, because for me, I can appreciate like the introvert funny account or the like um, recovery child account that's like kind of in jet, not makes fun of it by any means, but just in jet, like I feel seen and heard and like, oh, that joke resonates with me because that's like the scrambled egg, that, egg that's in my head at all times, you know? And so um, otherwise I'm, I'm really mindful about um, relying on my therapist or, you know, um, some spiritual mentors that I have in my life. Those are the ones that I I rely on as my resource for guidance and encouragement and whatnot. And when it comes to like trait education and whatnot, I think um, the Mayo Clinic and um, I, I I my mom has received a lot of really genuine and helpful care from the Mayo Clinic. So I really respect their output. But um, and then I I rely a lot on um, integrative medicine, um, and so. It's kind of anything that my integrative doctor will put at me, I'm, I'm willing to take a look at, you know? Yeah. Do you have anything for like business that you found really helpful um, for like business mindset or anything? Yeah. Like but I love that. I, yeah. I appreciate that you also filter because there's definitely seasons where I'm like, I just can't take in anymore. So I'll yeah. take a break. And then seasons where I'm yeah. like definitely yearning for motivation. And like, yeah. I remember reading, um, I always talk about this book, Rachel Rogers. Um, I think everyone deserves to be a millionaire or something like that oh my gosh that lit my butt on fire and yeah. it was just amazing so do you yeah, have any no, of those totally. books I the, the one thing is my favorite business book um I think that just the concept of narrowing things down and niching down and everyone having their own responsibility mm-hmm. and um you know basically for those listening the concept is if you if you're if you were to go pull up on YouTube right now, a pit stop at a, like a NASCAR race, and you were to watch it, a pit stop is what, like two seconds or something ridiculous, and they're able to change all those tires in that like flash of a second, and they're able to do it because they have 20 people doing their one job, and I think part of why that resonates with me, apart from just business mentors modeling how successful that is, I don't know, it, 
it connects for me because as someone that has to balance mental health, like sometimes all I can do is one thing. Yeah. <laughs> and like I think that's I think that's healthy for our headspace. And so I really appreciate that from you know a perspective of many hands uh make light work. And you know, sometimes I can't outsource everything, but you know, I think that sometimes it, it, it'd be hard. It really taught me, like, you know, it takes money to make money. And that was a, yeah. it was a really hairy, scary concept for me to start outsourcing because I felt like, oh, it's going to cost me money and it's something I can do. And, like, yeah, I absolutely can do it. But should I do it? And mm. is that the best use of my time? Is that actually going to make me money? Or can someone do that at a certain rate that's lower than my rate? Well, I am the visionary over here doing something that does make money because um, this stuff has to get done anyway. And so that was – that book really transformed my mindset. What, but, what yeah. title was it? It's called The One Thing. Okay. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, let me, my brain is wanting to give me two different authors. It is, it is Gary Keller. Okay. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to go out there and be wrong. It's Gary Keller. And okay. I've heard him speak too. It's so good. It's so good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm so with you on that of, and I feel like, again, there's different seasons. So there at one time you could ask me like at the beginning of this year, I was just like, yeah, I know exactly what moves the needle and what we need to do. And then like, ask mm -hmm. me now. And I'm like, actually we've had some changes with employees. And so I have to actually revisit this and like, okay, yeah. what moves the needle? Should I be doing this or should someone else be doing this? And like redelegating and just, I don't know. So yeah. I feel like with business, it's like always in like seasons of that, like feeling like you got it, it and all of a sudden you don't got it. Then you You're got like, it and then what? you don't got it. <laughs> Like right people right seat. What well, and then the last couple of years have been weird because we don't even know what data we're even, you know, collecting to study because the world's yeah. turned upside down and we don't know what's ahead of us. And so it is it is complicated. I, I will say this too. I feel like with books, I go in and out of seasons of interest in books and um reading as a whole. And what I find is when I'm in a reading phase, I get like so drawn in that I I just stay up way too late and I just run like I, I have to have a certain, I have to sleep. And if I'm stuck on a book and I stay up till two, like I will, I will stay up till two or I'm just like totally checked out of my family and my, and I'm gone. And so I've noticed that about me and I just have to use the word filter. I have to filter that. And yeah. so I tend to go into um, the mindset of if it's a business book, I'm going to build it into my workflow of my work day. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm going to spend time working on because it's, it's work. And I think a lot of us tend to like put that in our personal time. And that's not bad, but I know for me, I have to build that into my day. And then I try to, anything else I read outside of that or podcasts and stuff, I, I really try to go to like brainless stuff that's just fun yeah. and silly because I, you know, I've used my brain all day. Yeah. I just kind of, at that point, want to just not like rom com yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. Check oh, <laughs> for sure. I'm the same way. And so that's why. It, again, depends on the season. Sometimes I'll be like listening to a business podcast and sometimes I'm listening to just music or just something fun. Yeah. But if you had to, um, I would say one of my, I love romance books. Like it is my jam. And my yes. husband tends to know when I'm reading and when I'm not reading. Uh -huh, yeah, they do. Next tribe is very different. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, my, one of my favorite, which isn't actually a romance book, but it's by Colleen Hoover, which she, you know, she loves, always writes those like romance books. And um, it's called Verity. And it is kind of like a mystery. It's incredible. I think I finished it in less than 10 hours. I was I could not put it down it was the best book of like, the year the that I I'm gonna write this down very okay. so here. good oh my god it was so good so I know that I feel like I'm seeing a lot of like Colleen Hoover stuff even in like people I went to high school with I'm seeing like kind of an increase of everyone kind of reading her yeah books. no I know that author so do oh, you so okay do you like audiobooks I like audiobooks for business. I personally like physical books um, or Kindle yeah. for my romance or just the fun books that, that are thing. not business yeah. related. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to say the same. Uh, audiobooks, and I have such short commute times that it doesn't work out for me well anyway these days. I used to drive into Brings bring so three times a week, which for those listening yeah. is about 45 minutes an hour from where I live. And I... Uh, some of the, when I, I like audiobooks that are by, okay, for example, Matthew McConaughey wrote Green Lights. And I listened to that on an audiobook because it's the story of his life and he was the one that narrated the book. And he just has that fun voice and like, you know, if yeah. I had to read a book, you know, Michelle Obama's book, I haven't read that one, but like, I would want to 
I I would love to listen to the audiobook of her narrating her own book. Yes. Um, I, I, I love to, that kind of stuff. Um Chrishell Staus, who's on Selling Sunset. Um, I don't know if you watch the real estate no, I show. About I haven't seen it, but I know I'm and familiar. Yeah. She narrated her book. She wrote a book, and I listened to that in audio, and that was really cool to see, like just honestly, where she came from was uh-huh. not like opposite of what she is today. And so it was just cool seeing her grow and the confidence she had in herself and the risks that yeah. she took. So I would recommend that one too, if you like that. I think I do narration. Uh, yeah. No, I do. Well, audiobooks can also be a total bust if it's just like a narrator that yes. doesn't care. But I like I like audiobooks on planes because I feel like I can just close my eyes and set my head back. And like I just want to always be doing something. <laughs> so it allows me to do something without like draining my eyes and yeah yeah all of that. I love that that's kind of when I save my audio so. that's awesome yeah. awesome well feel, tell us where we can support you and where we can find you I know you shared with us your home manager guide which by the way Amber is the one that actually talked about this to my husband and made us um you know learn how and what to look for in a house manager so I highly recommend this guide you have to go download it <laughs> Yeah, no, this, uh, the, I stumbled on this. I don't remember how, oh, I think my husband was talking to someone in EO, which is the organization of how we've all met for those listening. And I was like, no, not one more thing to spend money on, right? Like this is only the rich and the famous have people that help in their home. And I was like, are you like, what? And he's like, no, 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 gear it out. And so we had lunch with a couple that was doing it. And I realized how it, in a lot of way, it offsets its own cost. You know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's efficient. I find it friendly in a lot of ways. I'm, you know, spending less. I'm not, and impulse purchases are not, I'm, there's no impulse purchases anymore. And because they're running the errands and I'm not, um, I'm not wasting food. And, yeah. you know, my dogs are getting walked. And so, yeah, I'm, it is, changed our lives I so. agree I agree so thank you for that but yeah. where can people find yeah. you um, what do you find me as well? yeah so Instagram is probably the best place because I have a link to you and take you different places but um we are refined for wedding planners on Instagram and through the link tree you can um sometimes the home manager guide for highlighting it is is in there and it's obvious in link tree otherwise you can just hop on over to the website and grab it but yeah it's a tool that'll walk you through all the ins and outs how to set it up how to interview how to pay people all that perfect awesome and we'll finish off with a lightning round of questions it's just either or so just choose one or the other all right so the first one is chill days or adventure days chill days dark chocolate or milk chocolate dark chocolate yes yes um (laughs) sweet or sour um Sweet. Plane or car? Yeah. Plane. And phone or tablet? Phone. Um. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't know about the tablet. The phone is just, it's still easier. <laughs> I, I actually need like all the tech. I honestly, I'm just so insane with like, I think I have every Apple product. It's kind of ridiculous, but I'm like, everything has a thing. Like my iPad is used for MacBook is used for something. I have my desktop that's used obviously for so it's just there's always something it can be used for. Yeah, but like how did we were the gener we are the we are the customer generation? Like we have spent or I did, I spent now at this point, I I am at the halfway, I'm at the like where I spent half of my life without this and half yes. my life with it. Yes. You know? Yes, I was um, I think probably around because I'm 30 now. So I was maybe around 10 or 11 that yeah. that's when tech, because I got my first phone at 13, which is like a flip phone. So yes. I'm pretty sure like my main childhood without tech and then from teens mm-hmm. and beyond, I've had some type of tech like yeah. a phone or whatnot. So yeah. I am kind of sad to think that, you know, like our kids, they don't know. What we'll never experience about. that. No, no, college is when tech started. I mean, we had well it's messed you're not dial up and all in, in high school but college is when we started getting tech and I remember I wanted to be a graphic designer and everyone's like no don't do that that's a waste of a degree and oh my gosh oh wow, that was the future and like we covered around our books and we had to like go to city libraries and like <laughs> oh my god that sounds yeah. so much fun though but I also am like such a library nerd like I love that stuff so yeah I mean- <laughs> yeah, no, it was. It was. I'm glad I got that experience, but I mean, it's. I mean, 
it was, it was, I did call it the hard way. <laughs> yeah, for so, sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, thank you, Amber, for coming on and spending time with us. Oh, it was fun. Thank you.